previously on Balls. Just getting hold of uh, Clinton Larson, who left Bloemfontein Celtic this week after um, a not very comfortable 4 0 defeat at the hand, Telcom Cup defeat at the hands of Sundowana, the Sundowns, Mamelodi Sundowns. Um, I was surprised, I've got to say, surprised. Um, to, to, that Clinton left. I, I love Clinton. We had a chat earlier in the season. Remember that game, Comfort, where uh, I think it was against Sundowns actually, and there was a red card, and Clinton went up to the ref live on television at half time, going, yeah. shouting at the ref. Uh, who was ref? Was it Slutswire? And, and shouting at the ref. It's always like this. You always get decisions like this when you're not Chiefs, Pirates, or Sundowns. And of course, he's absolutely right. Clinton Larson, my favourite um, my favorite referee analyst, Clinton. You, <laughs> Just regaling my viewers with with the the classic halftime chat where you um you actually explained to South African viewers that uh, live on air at halftime as they walked off the pitch that referees can sometimes discriminate against the smaller clubs in every country it's not just in South Africa. Clinton, I'm very sad to, that you resigned this week. I like talking to you. I, I like what you do. What happened? Do you just want to take us through briefly the the, the, the basics of of what happened there at Bloemfontein Celtic? Sure, Neil. Uh, yeah, basically, it's a decision that was a long time coming, probably three to four weeks. And, uh, yeah, basically, uh, summarize the, the, the season so far. And um, I was not happy um, as a head coach uh, um, as, to, as to the results that the club was getting. And uh, I took the decision upon myself to, to step down and give the club an opportunity to, to get someone else to lead the club forward. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, like I said, it's, it's, I've, I've been thinking long and hard about it. It's been four great years at the club. Uh, you know, we've never been out of the top eight. And uh, I just felt the time was right, Neil, to to step back and, um, and look for a new, fresh challenge. OK, listen, the reason I'm upset with you, Clinton, is that... Uh, yeah, I see this this happen in Europe quite a lot. When when a manager has a bad run of results or a coach, he will occasionally resign. But it's been my perception in the last three years since I've been in South Africa, since the World Cup, that very rarely do people in this country, rugby, cricket and politics, resign when things are going badly. They wait to be fired, they get the payoff, and they will not budge until someone kicks them very hard on the seat of the pants to put them out of their seat. I've seen very little in the way of resignations in this country, and yet, ironically... We saw two this week, and I, Clint, you made that. You made Bloemfontein Celtic. You, you restored. I mean, I know they're they're, they're, they're a well-supported club. We all love their fans, and Jimmy Augusto is, is a real character. We saw him running around when when you won the trophy last season, and, and Celtic were on a high. And I've got a lot of friends from Bocciabello who who love it when you win. And now you've resigned, mate. You can't just resign. I need to know that you're going to stay in football. Can you reassure the listeners that you will stay in football, Clinton Larson? No, I definitely will. I, I, I love the game too much, Neil. I'm too passionate about it. And regardless of what level I, I'm working in, I will definitely be involved in football. Um, so, yeah, uh, it, it was a very emotional decision for myself because, you know, I've, I've come to love the club and the people at the club. Uh, so I've parted on very, very good terms. You know, I was not forced out. And like you said earlier, Neil, I could have stayed on and wait for things to get a lot worse to get a big payout. But... It wasn't the case, you know. Uh, I've got a very good relationship with the club and I'd like to keep it that way. And who knows in the future what could happen, you know. So, yeah, um, I'm definitely going to be in, in, um, involved in football. Uh, um, it's something that uh, I love doing on a daily basis. And, uh, yeah, I'm on a small break with the family now. And uh, next week I will make contact with my agent, find out if there's any contact from any clubs, and we'll move forward from there. Yeah, listen, this small break, it's not anywhere near Polokwane. Is it a very beautiful part of the world? <laughs> Heinertsburg and around those parts. Are you anywhere near Polokwane? No, not at all. I'm, I'm in Bloemfontein, but uh, we are planning a holiday. Um, yes, I have been contacted by Polokwane. And no, I have not made a decision. Um, I'm not going to take any of the first job offer that comes my way. Uh, it's not the way I operate. Uh, so I'll think long and hard about um, about what I want to do next. Excellent, mate. Oh, yeah, that's all right here. I, I want to say to you this. I think your goalkeeper, Tiganyem, do I say that right? Is that the right pronunciation? Tiganyem? Tiganyem, yes. Tiganyem. Tiganyem. I thought he was very good last season. I think he's been very poor this season. I think... Uh, sure. 
the lad, um, well, I can't say this because Mike McCarb's going to shoot me, isn't he? I just think that, that one of your se- a couple of your centre backs were kind of tailed off a little bit as well this year. And I was look- watching you guys concede three or four goals, and I just thought mm. maybe maybe it is the right time for you to go and, and, and maybe zap up another side and, and get things running in another place. So. Clinton, always good to speak to you. Please don't lose contact with me, mate, because I, I want to see you back in the game. I want to see you um, inspiring you know, another club and let's see what happens at Celtic. I, I don't suppose you can point us in, in any direction with what will happen at Celtic. The, the lad Booby Solomons is there. Might he take over? Um, at this point, yes, he is the interim coach. I have no idea what the club's plans are, whether or not they're going to look uh, at, at keeping Booby on until the end of the season or whether they're going to bring somebody else in. But uh, they have told him that he is the interim coach, and I wish him everything of the best. I've got a great relationship with Booby. You know, a lot of people um, think may think that Booby wanted the job, and, and that's not the case. We've got a very good relationship. And good. actually, when I got uh, when I when I appointed Booby as my assistant last season, I done so for the for the mere fact that I said to the club that. Um, you know, should things not work out with myself, they don't need to look much further. They'll have a great man to take the club forward. And I hope that they do give him, give him this opportunity. Brilliant, Clint. Because, I mean, that, you, you're just answering the difficult question that I didn't have the bollocks to, uh, to ask, which is, you know, was Booby instrumental in you departing or is Booby kind of there to, 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 help you, to help the club through this post-Clint time? So you've answered that. Your relationship with him is good. Just to tell all those uh, strange websites that, that always suggest there's yeah. something wrong in these situations that that, that isn't the case and, and that Bloemfontein Celtic, uh, uh, you're still on good terms with them, with Jimmy and Bloemfontein, and so you can move quite smoothly into, um, into a new role after your holiday for two sure. weeks. But you just have to tell me where you're going, no, mate. I'm so yeah. worried. You're not... yeah, Neil, and, and another thing, yeah. another thing I'd like the listeners to know, you know, uh, there's always a speculation about was the interference in with Clinton's job? And uh, I can categorically say that there was never any interference from anybody at the club from the first day I started four years ago. Even yeah. when I assisted uh, Owen de Gama, never once did management ever interfere with team selection, training on any level. And uh, I wouldn't have stayed in the job so long had there been any interference. So I just want the, um, you know, the, the skeptics out there to, to know that um, you know, that's not one of the reasons why I have resigned because I got the full support of and backing of management and there's never been any interference at any level. I've got full support from the technical director, Mitch Davre, and Jimmy Augusti, the chairman, and everyone else involved, um, associated with the club. So I just wanted to clear that up as well, Neil. Thanks. That's exactly why you're on air, mate, to clear up the uh, the whispers and the rumours. Mitch Davry, a man with great experience, um, uh, still in the background there. Jimmy, a man who works hard for the club, and Booby Solomons. They're who you mm-hmm. leave there. You don't leave the club with nothing. You leave the club with a structure sure. in place. They can decide for themselves now where they go, and you can decide for yourself where you go. Unless you go on holiday sure. to Zambia where there's no coach at the moment. I don't want you going there, mate. <laughs> OK, <laughs> great stuff. Clinton Larson, it's great to speak to you on Bollocks, on Balls Radio, and all the best for the future, mate. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure chatting to you, Neil. All, all the right, best. Mate. Listen, have a great holiday. Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye. What a bloke. You've got to say, this country has some of the, of, of the nicest coaches to speak to. I mean, such a privileged position to call everyone from Gordon Iggerson and, and, and Gavin Hunt. And, and we're going to have, of course, Kevin Johnson, another one of my favourite blokes. He's going to come on in a minute and explain to us why he's a little bit unhappy about the way referees are influenced by coaches on the touchline. This is Bulls Visual Radio.